come to both sides of the United States, it's different lifestyle. Yeah. Different lifestyle, you know. When I remember one time I got into a debate with somebody out west because I was saying, we have gangster rappers too. They you know, gangster rappers is soft. I said, why you say that? Because y'all ain't living like we living. And that's the way they felt. Look, shout out to my man Glasses. Shout out to Glasses Malone. He, he had a very good point. He said, East Coast is hip hop culture. West Coast is gang culture. Like, y'all are hip hop first, and then whatever comes after that comes but after that. But that's not true. But it's not I'm just, true. I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving, no, 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 I get, I, I get <laughs> it. Like, but, but historically, Come on, bro. Yeah, that's not. He, he just said it was games before hip hop. How many games? He said it was games before hip hop. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 I'm not saying this. No, I know you're not. I know you're not. But I'm just saying to refute that. And I hear where y'all are coming from, and I even agree to an extent. But gang culture out there is all encompassing, and it's first. I don't believe because it's allowed. Uh, whatever the it's reason, allowed. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not here. You know, I'm just saying we live reason. in a money city, bro. Right. Look out there, yeah, yo. You, oh, y'all want to paint your whole hood red? <laughs> Go ahead. We don't care. Try that shit in New York. Yeah, you can't. Nah, you can't so do it. it's the you money gotta city. You got to pay for the permit. Yeah, yeah. But you can't. Yeah, it's the money city. They, they not letting it, that fly. They kept it over there. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, but you can't. You can't. had some that learned how to balance it, but they kept it separate. Yeah, but right. Jay, Jay, Jay Z, Diddy, the more successful hip hop dudes from the East Coast, aren't having meetings in the projects anymore either. You and they're I mean? still the most successful gangsters. Right. The most Not successful gangsters are the dudes that sitting in corporate. I sit across them all the time, and they are more ruthless than any dudes I've ever seen in mm -hmm. the street. They make decisions that could take a whole lot of people out, you know, and they do it like that. Put yeah. it this way. Let me put it to you like this. And I'm not talking about within hip hop culture. I'm going to give you a, a sample of entertainment culture. This is what I learned. There's a lot of person, a lot of people that was incarcerated that had grew up amongst entertainers, but they was living that life in the streets. Right. What some of them did looking out. When they came home, I want you to take this record, put it up on your arm, I want you to go and see if you can get this record played by a DJ. See if you can get this record player. They introduced the people who was coming out of jail or who was coming off the street, they lead into. Now, they're going to look at it this way. Some of the most successful business people are street cats. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, absolutely. Okay, let me get into this. Let me see how I can work it. And then they start working their mind. Right, Before yeah. you know it, they start working their mind. Say, well, I can do this. And they establish because some of the biggest thugs start becoming it. record owners. Mm -hmm. They establish a business. The drug dealers used to think when I was growing up, rapping was corny. Yeah. Until they figured out that they wanted to get they some of the money. fame like the rappers was getting. Of and, course. And then they could bust a rhyme. When and yeah, exactly. Corny, but rap when was, rappers became the new drug exactly. dealers. Exactly. When, they, when, when, when the rappers were stealing the light. Yeah. I would mm. say about... um. Early 80s? Mid, mid uh, nah, it was later way, than that. Way later. Later, later than, than that? that? Yeah, way I, later. I, I say it was me? in the 90s. Not, 98? Wait, 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 hold on. Did no, it start with Cool G? No. I don't think so. Are you sure? I'm, yeah, that's I'm, some thought. No. Who? No, 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 <laughs> the yeah. paid, the paid in full era. That's when rappers were dressing like right. drug dealers had the cars that drug dealers had. Was going up and getting the custom made gear that drug dealers got, but they didn't have to sell drugs. And now they got more fame than drug dealers. Mm -hmm. right. no, but so they, the drug dealers want to become rappers. When, when the saying. rappers were nah. going to jail and they were still wearing the same clothes, driving the same car, and like getting all the same Rick. chicks. They were like slick Rick and them. I, 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 no, nah. the paid, yes, the paid in full yeah, era. I said ho. Dick Rock nah, him. I said Dick ho, Rock him. My older, brother was from, my older brother was from that era, right? He used to tell me all the time, these, I, he looks but yo, Supreme was in one of the early photos with Rakim. Yeah, yeah. But what, but but him and the original 50. What's, what's, the, the, and the 50 oh, Cent was right next to him. Hold on, hold on. But was Supreme trying to rap? 
No, because Supreme, Supreme that, that's was, what I'm saying. Supreme was too far oh, gone, but when did but the would he take a picture with the rappers? Be rappers? Thank you. The actual when, drug dealer me, want to be the rapper. When not Misha, when the rapper wants to be I would say from 98 to 05, yeah, from when when Hove started really cooking to that young Jeezy startup, nah, y'all that's tripping. when you seen the y'all drug dealers. Because it depends on what you mean. Yeah, because you saying drug dealers rapping about selling drugs? Because I could tell you there were many rappers that came before Jay Z that used to sell drugs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I read Russell, Russell yeah, Simmons book and he was a drug about. dealer. You Russell feel what Simmons I'm saying? was a drug dealer and it's a that yeah, was I see we were selling weed. Or we yeah, yeah, drugs. Yeah, I mean that was whatever it was. Whatever it was. But no, I understand exactly what you're saying. Like it was like a lighter stance of being a drug dealer. Yeah, yeah, but it was some sort of a time. Leave in the comments what year did Drug dealers wanted to start being rappers. After Let's go. Easy I'm gonna tell you, oh, that's a good one. After yeah. the first album by Everything by Kim, mm -hmm. that's when they got a big signed deal for MCA for eight hundred thousand. Mm. During that time, I used to have all the dealers come to me and say, "Yo, Red, they getting it like that now?" They was just, they were shocked because they. Always thought about and saying, oh, you just getting a little bit of money. We got the money. But once they heard about that big contract, and then other people start getting some of the contracts behind that, oh, they're getting it like that now, Russell's going on? Mm. So they opened their eyes. Paid in full <laughs> error, that's what yeah. I said. Paid in full, even if they didn't start rapping, when you, the first, as soon as you see a drug dealer in a picture with a rapper, that's it. That's they wanted it. to become producers. Yeah, yeah they weren't they trying to rap. They were trying yet. to get they next to them. They were trying to get next to them. Okay, okay. All right. I want to get on a record. Yeah. And All right. Be a rap. All right. Let, let, let's okay, let, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Nineties, okay. towards that the 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 I ghetto guess fabulous. Uh huh. Like I said, around ninety four, but I say on puffin the puffin them lead to Rockefeller. But still, you had on the side the cats for the, having the streets on lock. Boot camp click. Mm -hmm. I was similar to them. Shout out so to that kept became a balance. But what had override that the image that you know, Diddy and them was, and Rockefeller and all of them were portraying was showing that, you know, oh, we moving on up. We moving ahead. We going forward. This is what we bring. This is what we have. This is what you got to believe what it is. We come far from where we started. Right. You know, that's what it was. Meanwhile, people who such as the boot camp click and many others similar to them, Wu Tang just as well. Right. They say, no, we still we still grimy and gritty. Right. You no, know, we moved up too, but we still keeping ourselves the same way. Mm. You now we probably got just about the same what you have or even less, but we still got it. Right. So that's when you was looking upon which direction you wanna go. You wanna be with this or you wanna be with that? His shout out to Black Sheep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, who would you say won that battle? Huh? <laughs> who would you say won that battle? The or won that who won the people over? Um, it, it's it's a little of both, but mm. I say more towards the glamour. The glamour. Yeah. Because look how it coming to today's time. People are still upholding that image. Mm -hmm. You know, being glamorous, you know, explosion, showing, you know. Right. Where coming to a lot of the artists that's on the commercial level today is above the average. They follow that blueprint from what was taking place in the early, in the, that 93, 94. Right. That's you know? what Uncle Ralph said too, the shift. He sat in the same chair. It was that shift. 92, that's, he said it, it shifted So when you're looking at artists like the Migos or like Khaled, they trying to show and display all what they, how they living. That comes from the Diddy area. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm. Now awesome. the true hip hop heads, they still go and carry their own. Mm -hmm. And they living like that, but they still resonate the streets. Right. Dipset still resonate the, the streets. streets. Right. Locks still represent the streets. Right. You know? So it had became a separation, but they both had grew. How how influential was someone like Big Daddy Kane towards that era? Big Daddy Kane showed how he's fierce on the mic, 
but came across in a sophisticated way for it to be appealing to the audience. And the ladies. His style, <laughs> his image, while spitting that fire. Mm. That's what it was. When you look at that whole Juice Crew, it was a lot of diversity in the Juice Crew. Right. We know how raunchy and raw that Shantae can be. We know how Shan could be. We, could, we know how lyrical Kooji Rack could be. Same thing for Kane, but their image was different. Mm -hmm. Then you had some people that was like, not as mainstream them, but they still can bring it like a Craig G, mm -hmm. like a Master Ace. You know, I'm just naming a few that, you know, they was very diverse in their own way. But Kane, he stand out on his own. No, I gotta ask. What did y'all think when you saw Kane in the pool mm. <laughs> with Naomi Campbell? With Naomi Campbell looking like she' about to get crazy with Madonna with and Madonna. her legs in the air. What was did the you thought? see that picture? When people were like, yo, that's <laughs> glamour right there, right? That's the glamour, right there. That's, that's, that that right. that's, that's that glamour. glamour right there. <laughs> that's, that gri the glamour. that's grimy that you read, or that's huh? the glamour? That was the glamour. That was the glamour for them at that time. No, yeah. bro, that's beyond some hood nigga shit. <laughs> Don't do that to right me. Now. That was glamorous right now. But when that picture hit, was it oh, like, right. he's a rapper though. Like, he was right? showing in his own way, he say. In his own way. <laughs> in his own way, uh -huh. I moved up with the type of chicks I'm dealing sure, with at this right. time. Right. right. I'm this is the chicks I'm dealing with at that time. Right. You know? You know, you know why that picture didn't surprise Put it me? this way. Mm. And it's going to sound crazy, but I'm being honest. Sick. By making that song with Kane called Calling Mr. Welfare, where it was talking about resonating people from the hood, mm -hmm. to him go ahead and doing, taking pictures like that, showed that how he was escaping from that. Mm -hmm. to move up to the next thing. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So naturally, even if you take Diddy and Hove out, hip hop was gonna progress that way. It now. was always in progression. It's just that it was showing so many different directions. Mm -hmm. It always showed different directions. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It was, one thing about hip hop, it's everlasting. Yeah. Like in the great words with Grandmaster Cass say, hip hop didn't invent anything, it reinvent Everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what it is. And it always went for different directions. Really? Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah, he had a, um, a venue he had to go to so he couldn't make it. Of course he he's a working. Precept venue. It's hot for trap trapper turn smack rapper. Smack. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Uh -huh. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends sleep earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf you heard.